But nothing is hopeless. We are not doomed. There are serious kinds of work that need to be done. And note that I have again and again pointed at two classes of workers on the other side. An army primarily engaged in seeking to support a monopoly and a collection of trolls seeking to acquire revenue through the exploitation of exclusive rights. There is no party within our industry engaged in a primarily political campaign against freedom. None at any rate that can be admitted. Let's just be clear that this is none of it the case with respect to pharma. There is no growing recognition of a need for global disarmament in pharma, quite the contrary. There is no significant raison de clerc within the research pharma-based sector in the North. It remains solidly in control of the United States government through what one healthcare economist in the United States has called, perfectly rare, fairly, its large equity stake in the United States Congress. There is no prospect of gaining at, the, at this time the political assistance of either of the large governments on earth to rein in research-based proprietary pharmaceuticals. There is no reason to believe that any party in the pharmaceuticals industry currently benefiting from large-scale patenting will change its business model because the pipeline of patents-based economy of pharma is far too important to the long-term strategic plans of the pharmaceuticals industry to be casually varied. I didn't come here to talk about these issues, and I'm not going to spend more time on them. I'm leaving inadequate time for questions as it is. But what I want to point out is that we are now talking about local opportunities within our industry side. We are not talking about global success in reigning in the difficulties of the patent system. Those are political questions that have to be politically addressed by all of us as citizens of democracies. As workers for the benefit of free software, on the other hand, we have short-term benefits and short-term challenges which pose real hope of ameliorating, if not eliminating altogether, major parts of the patent problems from which we suffer. It would be wrong to indulge in despair, and it would be wrong to put all our chips behind merely systemic remedies. I recognize that this represents a difficult message when we are also engaged in stimulating our friends and colleagues within our communities and nearly adjacent communities to get involved in fundamental reform. We can't afford to stop that process. We can't afford to slacken in our efforts on behalf of that process. We have to keep agitating for fundamental reform, and the message of fundamental reform has to be a basic, simple, conveyable message, just say no. While we do that, and we are wise to do that, and our politics are only correctly aligned if we do that, we had better, however, be shrewd as foxes and wise as serpents and refrain from putting all our own resources into that activity alone, because we have other work to do. I don't consider myself to be an expert in any part of this work, though the Software Freedom <coughs> Law Center is, at the moment, a bunch of firemen half-dressed waiting to go down the pole when the bell rings. There have to be a few such places around the world, and we are busy trying to make them as rapidly as we can. Certainly one of those places is here. We will engage over the next two years in episodic defense in places where the war has been carried to us. We will engage in commando activity in places where the war needs to be carried to them. We will continue to collect resources and to make plans and to discuss plans so far as we can, consistent with operational security. Even we concern ourselves with operational security from time to time, though we are the most transparent government on earth. We conduct more of our public business in the open than any other society on the globe. We do more arguing in mailing lists and blogs and more shouting and screaming and arm waving than the Israeli, South Korean, and Taiwanese parliaments put together. 
but even we occasionally have secrets, and even now sitting here today I occasionally have a few. We will take advantage of opportunities, either publicly or privately, to continue to erode the threats on the other side. This is real. This is important. When you see the bulletins, don't think this is around the edges minor stuff. We wouldn't be spending blood and treasure on minor stuff. We know perfectly well that they have tens of billions of dollars and we don't. The thousands or few millions that we have available to put into the effort, we will spend wisely. We will shoot at nothing before it's time. And when we take it out, it will be a ball bearing factory, not merely an ice cream parlor. But in that process, one of our fundamental assets is that we retain the diplomatic possibility of actually reaching a belief in a durable and low cost peace in which there are many, many fewer of these weapons lying around. We have to continue to regard the attainment of that kind of durable peace with the same degree of long-term enthusiasm that we think about relief from the patent system altogether. And thus, our messages are complicated and mixed. We have many things to say to our comrades in the struggle. You are absolutely you know more than everybody else. You understand more deeply than others what this is about. You have taken time to educate yourselves. You have taken trouble to become both informed and influential in your communities. Your ability to help build opinion on these subjects is crucial to our success. And you're stuck with a complicated sale. It's not simple. There's not one right answer. It's not just say no, but it's not just not say no. It's a whole lot of things at a whole lot of levels. We are a mature society now. We have objectives, we have government, we have challenges, we have opportunities, we have diplomacy and war, and we have the ability to celebrate peace. All of those are worthy. We have to help our comrades understand all of it in its full complexity without scaring them and without confusing them. I recognize that even what I have said here is too much to be simple and too simple to be really useful. So with that in mind, and assuming that I know something more than I have said and not rather less, I welcome your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Moffman. That's been quite a performance, he's been spoken absolutely non-stop, he hasn't taken a sip of that water for 75 minutes, uh, I reckon a little more than 75 minutes, so I'm sure he's now willing to answer whatever questions you have for him. Please do identify yourself before you raise the questions, Professor Morgan. Great, Hari Haran, I'm open source evangelist who happens to work for IDAC. I guess uh, I'll start by saying that you know I think uh, we have something to congratulate ourselves in the Indian open source community uh, is because we really fought hard against the Patent Amendment Act and made sure that software patents was kept out of that particular act. I think a lot of credit goes to the Communist Party, Naveer, uh, the Free Software Foundation, and others. So, but that was just you know one part of the war. The battle is still to be fought. And today, for example, in the papers there is this whole. Recently, there was in the parliament there was this whole battle that saying that so yoga somebody is trying to patent uh, yoga or copyright yoga. Vikram Chaudhary, for example. The most interesting statement by Vikram Chaudhary was uh, when somebody asked him why are, why is he trying to do this. He his, his answer was this is the American way of life. <laughs> this is something that would be deeply alleged. <coughs> and you know, for example, there were some yogis, uh, Baba Ramdev, for example, who is very famous as a yoga teacher. And he was railing against it, saying that this is deeply unethical. So I think, primarily to me, this seems like a clash of cultures. There is a mercantile tradition in the West which seeks to commoditize and find the knowledge. There is a different kind of a tradition, and I've been criticized for calling it the spiritual tradition of India, where you know we are trying to keep knowledge open, share it with others. Yoga, Ayurveda, these are great examples of it. But uh, you know, to take this question forward, we in India have one certain bar. How can we? contribute to winning the global battle of the world? 
Well, Venki, let me just say that one of the reasons that I tried to describe the historical confusions that I see about patent in the American Republic is to offer an implicit response to this, it's the American way of life. Uh, that's, a, that's a fair statement, you understand. I mean, it's like saying that at a certain moment in the empire of Catherine the Great, Potemkin villages were the Russian way of life. Right? It's a truth, but it's a slightly partial one. Um, we are at the moment experiencing a republic of rent-seeking in the United States in a lot of different ways. Uh, the rent-seeking of the petroleum companies may be more obviously affecting life on Earth in both the short-term and the long-term sense, and you could describe that too as the American way of life. But I think what it means is the world's dominant empire has entered its period of venality and corruption of politics. And to say of that, that that constitutes a positive justification for doing something somewhere else would be, in my judgment, absurd and a little bit repugnant. What is really being meant is the proprietization of things, the reduction of everything to property, was in the late 20th century regarded as the successful dogma that emerged from the bilateral confrontation between the United States and the Soviet Union in the midst of which confrontation there was a thing called the non-aligned movement, which it would be reasonable to point out had if it had a mailing address, its mailing address here. Uh, and its purpose was to suggest that by growing diplomatic agility among the people of the world, it might be possible to offset the bilateral confrontation that was going on and its tendency to polarize philosophy. From time to time, that took on traditional clothing. The non-aligned movement made major attempts to affiliate its immediate diplomatic structures to the longer term traditional understandings of the societies that were being forcibly modernized in the aftermath of decolonialization. And what I heard in the way you put your question together was, of course, something rather like that same question. Can we somehow offset this hyperpower politics of patenting? And the answer is, yeah, and by those means, which I, too, was calling out in my main remarks. We have a diplomatic opportunity to set a counterweight. That counterweight will consist in some part of capitalism's own tools used against itself. That's necessary because we must have money to carry on the war. And because in the long run, we must not be a movement of expropriation. If we are, we will suffer the fate of movements of expropriation. They will gather their forces and we will lose. So we're not a movement of expropriation. We're a movement of adaptation. We offer property an opportunity to save itself from the wreck by mediating the tendency of capitalism to go to logical extremes, thus threatening to annihilate itself. Okay, We've been there before. This is a system. It exists alongside capitalism and is its, for all purposes, physical opposite. It's Newtonian reaction. And so we are the ones driving the Newtonian reaction to capitalism's indiscretion at the moment. And if we do so adroitly, we will succeed in the way that those ameliorist movements have traditionally succeeded. We will gain political power and we will institute regulation. I have tried to suggest just how simple that regulation could be. We will play games in Washington till the cows come home in amending the patent system. And it will be a Christmas tree too big to move through Congress for a generation. After which, with the suddenness of Graham Leach Bliley or the 1996 Telecoms Act, a moment of partisan venality will be arrived at deep enough to permit the whole Christmas tree to move through the digestive tract of the U.S. Congress, and out will come patent reform. We should have little interest in patent reform, but we should have much interest in the idea that patent law is just administrative law.